Sing it, then we play the rainbow rings. Each design is. Welcome, 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 geeks and nerds, girls and boys, to a brand new edition of Geek to Me Radio. Tonight, actor, writer, comedian Greg Proops talking about the Who's Live Anyway Tour coming to the factory in Chesterfield later this month. Talk about his favorite comedians. We'll talk Nightmare Before Christmas, his connection to Star Wars, and more. Stand by. We're talking to If you're driving around the greater St. Louis area tonight, listening to us on the big 550 KTRS. Hello to all of you. Thank you for tuning in. If you're listening to us randomly at the intermission for the Spider-Verse out in the factory, like Michelle Shea, our ticket winners from a few weeks ago. Uh, hello to Michelle. If you're streaming us out there in the world on the web or Facebook or uh, YouTube right now in the video, hello to you. And of course, if you're hearing us after the fact in the podcast form on whatever platform you listen to your podcast, we appreciate you listening listening there as well. Uh, we got Barry King in the chat saying he just saw Equalizer 3 today. Great third act of the film. We love it when Bar- when uh, BK checks in with us. Um, yeah, I haven't seen that one yet, BK. Hopefully, uh, I'm seeing Blue Beetle tomorrow, actually. I haven't had a chance to see a lot of movies lately. It's been busy, but uh, hopefully we'll start to remedy that soon. want we'll to make sure we tell you about, uh, we're very proud to have our premier sponsors, the City of St. Charles, Greater St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau, and Citizens Debt Relief. We'll tell you more about both of those sponsors later on this hour. But first up, we got a care package in the mail from Kokomo Toys in Kokomo, Indiana. If you've not ever been there before, it is an amazing place. If you're a toy collector, you need to go see Kokomo Toys. Follow them. If you follow them on Instagram and Twitter, they're very active on social media, and it's great to see their stuff there. I'm assuming they're on TikTok. Uh, tick, t- I sound like an idiot. TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. Uh, I need to get on there. I've had so many people tell me I need to be on TikTok. It's one more app to work, and I just don't know that I had the bandwidth for it, but... We'll see. But anyway, uh, Kokomo Toys is all over social media. If you can't make it there in person, at least check out their social media because they've got great videos of all the stuff they've got. Very jealous. They had a mint on card G.I. Joe big boa action figure from 1987. They were showing off something I'd want so bad. So it's a good thing that Kokomo Toys is all the way located in Kokomo, Indiana, far from me. But they sent me a nice care package of toys and goodies to give away. So we're going to start every Sunday... We're going to start the hour off with a trivia question. I'm going to try to keep it toy related so that uh, it sticks with the theme of Kokomo Toys. So anyone listening right now, if you're from outside the greater St. Louis area, I will ship the winner uh, their prize. Tonight's toy trivia question. I was vetching to Joey V right before we started. I said, oh, I haven't created a question yet. So right off the top of my head, um, what was the name of the toy company that first produced Star Wars toys after the movie in 1977. What was the name of the toy company that first produced the Star Wars toys that came out in 1977 based on the original movie, A New Hope? You can either text the answer to 84126. You can call us on the KTRS lines at 314-931-5877. Or if you're in the chat right now, like Michelle and Zachary. Hello to Zachary Nathanson. Hello there. Uh, If you're in their chats, you can leave the answer there. I will watch those. And as soon as I see a correct answer, I will let you know. And we will uh, get that person sent a cool set of toys, care of Kokomo Toys in Kokomo, Indiana. Actually, a phone line just came in. Uh, I don't have a phone screener, uh, so we're going to go ahead and just take this live on the air. Uh, this is geek to me Radio. Hi, who's this? Nope, I need to actually hit the button. Don't I? This is geek to me Radio. Hi, <laughs> who's Hello. this? 
How are you? Hello? Yes. Was it was it Hasbro? It was not Hasbro. Uh, That's a what? great I think I think I, I think Hasbro had the toy you. What? later on. Was it Hasbro? It was not not Hasbro. No, Hasbro oh, was sorry. incorrect. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much for listening though. I appreciate the call. Um Zachary Nathanson, you just you're the first one. It came in through the in the text line. Zachary Nathanson said Kenner. Kenner Toy Line uh, is the correct answer. They pretty much that was their breakout toy. They were kind of mid tier, and then all of a sudden uh, they were able to get this Kenner Toy Line with a three and three quarter inch action figure. Boom! They and there was no looking back. They went on to do the Superpowers Toy Line, one of my personal favorites. So Zachary Nathanson, um, if you would please. Text the KTRS text line to 84126. Text me your phone number there. It'll show up on my screen only. And then I will call you after the show to get your address so that I can mail you those toys. So thank you very much, all of you, for listening. Uh, Congratulations to Zachary as the winner of that first inaugural round of our Kokomo Toys trivia question. Uh, Larry Quiggins listening right now. Loves Greg Proops. uh, Favorite rotating member of the Who's Line cast. And he would often mention him in his improv classes a lot. Uh, should have been a permanent member of the team. Thank you, Larry. We appreciate you listening tonight. Hello, Chance from Atlanta. Happy Labor Day Eve to you as well. Chance listening from Atlanta. A lot of people tonight. A lot of people want to hear Greg Proops, I guess. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right to my interview with actor, writer, comedian Greg Proops. Right now, we're joined by writer, actor Greg Proops. He's in a brand new show coming to St. Louis with also stops in Columbia and Kansas City and Springfield, Missouri, for those of you listening in that area. Who's Live Anyway, which is a live show from Whose Line Is It Anyway? Greg, thanks for your time today. My pleasure, James. So all the stuff I was looking at as I was kind of researching, I was very curious, uh, you know, I born in Phoenix, you went to school in California. What made it, what was the event that made you decide, hey, I want to be in show business? Well, that's a very good question. Um, I'm from San Carlos, California, the widest place on earth, home of the Plain Yogurt Festival, (laughs) uh, south of San Francisco. And, uh, you know, I started to go to San Francisco when I was a teenager and see shows and whatnot. And my parents took me to see, uh, there was a a, a cabaret in in San Carlos called the Circle Star Theater. So when I was little, I saw Ella Fitzgerald and um, Jimmy Durante wow. and Pearl Bailey, uh, Count Basie, whatnot, and I thought it was real exciting. Then I got to college in San Francisco, and I went to an improv show at my dormitory, and I'd never seen one before. I'd done stand-up comedy and everything, and um, after I saw the show, I thought I could do that. So I jumped up the next week when they asked for a volunteer. I sat in the front row, and then they asked me to join their group, and that was a long, long time ago. And then about 10 years after that, Who's Line came to San Francisco to audition, and I got on that show. And oh my God, that was, what, 30-something years ago. So we've been on for over 30 years now. And then, you know, once I got going um, doing stand-up and improv and working with my friends, it was pretty irresistible, you know, the idea of being paid to do your own thing. (laughs) Also, uh, being treated like an adult when I was a teenager, I think, was really important to me. And it's interesting, you're doing the show with Ryan Stiles, Jeff B. Davis, and Joel Murray. Uh, improv is one of the things I always tell people as they're growing up. I feel like everyone should have to do two things, wait tables and take an improv class. Do you Did you have like an immediate connection with, uh, with Ryan and Jeff and Joel as you kind of started working together? Well, you know, Ryan and I go back to, I think we started on the show together. I started in 89, and then Ryan came on in 90 with Colin. So, And then Ryan and I have been on the road in a group together since 1999. So, um, yeah, you know, we, we always got along. We were always uh, friendly. And then, of course, we've been in a group together since time began now. So it's uh, Jeff, is, Jeff was the new guy. Um, and then Joel joined in 2012. So he's the new guy so that you can see how slowly things move in our group. We're like a glacier. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have a lot of chemistry. We can throw the ball backwards to each other with our eyes closed, like the Harlem Globetrotters. So we don't really worry too much about connecting because we're, we're already connecting all the time. We don't spend all day together. I mean, unless we're in the car or whatnot, um, we eat dinner together before the show and that tends to be chatty, but, uh, uh, you know, the spark is always there to do this, uh, this kind of thing. We all really want to do it. And it, it's great fun for us. We still make each other laugh. 
And when you think of people, you know, comedians such as yourself and and Ryan and things like that, you you kind of picture you guys are out to dinner. It's it you're on all the time. You're always trying to make each other laugh. Is there that aspect, or is it comes time? Does, does ebb and flow? And it's kind of like we just want to hang out. We just want to, you know, have a glass of wine, have dinner, and just keep it low key. Well, we can be quiet. Obviously, we're we're all serious individuals. Uh, I wouldn't say we're deep, but we're serious. Um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, no, generally we riff on each other a lot, and, and that's how we kind of get warmed up. We don't really do any warm-up games. I know you were talking about taking an improv class, but it's been a long time since any of us have taken a class. I think the point is to learn all the rules of improv so that you can break them on stage and be funny. And you've been at it so long, I'm not sure if you'd need to take a class. It would almost like be a like a Jedi Master going back to lightsaber training. I mean, it's always good to keep your skills sharp, but I assume that – you're doing it as often as you are. It just kind of now it's, it just kind of flows. It comes naturally. Uh, our skills are sharp. We do a hundred shows a year. So, I mean, we're never not far from a stage. Uh, we, uh, we just took a couple weeks off now, but by the time we get to you guys, we'll be in full swing again. So we're on the road right this second doing about four or five shows this week, but we had a little summer break, which was nice for us. So we didn't uh, choke each other to death. <laughs> when you guys take a break from each other what do you do is there like you, obviously if you're doing theater you've got like a brush up rehearsal if you take some time off so is there do you guys have any particular exercises you guys do or do you got do you not need it at this point well i went to london and i did a podcast i did stand up and i did uh, an improv show in london with the comedy store players who are a lot of the people you'd remember from english who's not as in any way richard vaunch and josie lawrence and whatnot uh, so I, I, I worked on my time off. Uh, I don't know what the other guys did. I assume they made a ship and put it in a bottle or something. <laughs> the other thing, of course, is there's a strike going on right now. Yes. Uh, and, <clears throat> excuse me. All over the country with SAG and AFTRA. So we haven't really, any of us, been able to do any telly or anything like that. So, But I, I try to keep sharp, you know. Uh, and I, I'm even doing a Zoom stand-up show on one of our nights off on this trip. Oh, wow. I like to keep it, you know, I got a new album coming out, a new stand-up album coming out on the 1st of September called uh, French Drug Deal. And uh, although I don't do as much stand-up as I used to, I still try to keep my hand in uh, because I consider myself a stand-up comic who does improv. Mm. And with, with uh, I would think it's the same thing, but you're working a slightly different muscle because you're playing off the crowd to some extent, but you've also got kind of an outline you follow for stand-up versus improv. Would you have one, like if someone said, hey, you can only do improv shows going forward or you can only do stand-up, would you be able to pick? No, I don't think so. I'd have to make a terrible biblical decision and kill both the babies. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, I, uh, when I do stand-up now, I largely improvise. I, I'll go out with a framework and I'll just try to fill in the blanks as I go along. Like the last couple of albums I've made, I knew what I was going to talk about and I had certain beats, um, but I would improvise within that. So I'm really trying to keep it as free as possible because when I do the podcast live, I'm always uh, improvising. I, I'll go in with a bunch of ideas of what I want to talk about and then I'll riff on them. So with the podcast, I can do more literature history art current events you know obituaries whatnot uh like when we we're in london it was mick jagger's birthday so i did some mick jagger we talked about mick jagger you know we're in london blah um if we're going to do one this week we'd we'd certainly talk about what was going on in politics and um and then of course all the uh famous people that have passed in the last few weeks peewee paul rubens and whatnot because uh, yeah. i've had the chance to work with him over the years and um, I had a friendly relationship with him, and he was a wonderful comedian. But then, of course, with stand-up, it's more laser-focused. And to mix metaphors here, James, uh, improv is going backwards down a river in a boat. You can see where you're, you've been, but you can't see where you're going. Hmm. That's well put. I, li I never pictured it like that, but that, that does paint the picture perfectly. Right. With uh, you mentioned the the podcast you're doing and things like that. One of the things that has struck me as I've kind of been watching comedians lately is social media. Uh, the active, you know, you've got YouTube, you've got the podcast that you mentioned, things like that. There's so many different ways 
to reach your audience as there were back when like the amazing Jonathan or Kevin Meany or even someone really huge like uh, Eddie Murphy specials. I'm just thinking how much for you having done this for a while, how much has social media changed how you do what you do? How you do what you do with social media thrown in. We are going to get that answer from Greg Proops. Uh, if you have, I would say normally, I would say if you have a call or a call, call in, if you have a question for Greg, obviously this is a pre-recorded interview. Uh, so Greg's not taking questions, unfortunately. But we're going to come right back. We'll get a lot more answers and a lot more conversation to be had with Greg Proops. We're listening to Geek to Me Radio. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Get the party going on the dance. So you have to keep both eyes on the game. Oh, brother. Do they say that too? Funny. In television master component from Mattel Electronics, lock and chase video game cartridge sold separately. Now what do I do? Okay, this is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Video game cartridge. You have to buy it separately to play on the Intellivision video game system. Mom and Dad have to hook it up to the TV. What next? You're trying to find a crown, but it's real easy to get lost. So don't be surprised if the dragon finds you first. Holy cats, you just killed the dragon. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons video game cartridge and Intellivision Master Component from Mattel Electronics, each sold separately. Poor little pound puppies, they had no one to love them. Pound puppy, you were sad and lonely. Watch your home, now you're my one and only. Pound puppy, you're my one and only puppy love. Pound puppies are so cuddly soft, they feel real. Each sold separately. You can name them. Fetch Coco. And for a few dollars more, send for a name tag, stickers, and owner certificate. Jim Pillock, and you're listening to Geek to Me Radio. Get in touch with your inner geek. Welcome back. You're listening to Geek to Me Radio on the Big 550 KTRS, heard here every Sunday night. I'm your host, James Enstall. Joey V with me in the studio tonight. That's why we've got video up. Uh, always great to have him here with me. I want to tell you about our brand new sponsor that uh, we're we're talking to right now. It's Citizens Debt Relief. Uh, let's face it, the economy is not great. Uh, a lot of people. I just read a statistic online the other day that more people are using credit cards now than ever before. Credit card debt is up across the board. Uh, people are dipping into their savings and they're using their credit cards for everyday essentials and things like that. Credit card debt is nothing fun. It's something obviously everyone's experienced with. If you're having trouble, sometimes it can feel like you are just drowning in debt. There's a lot of people out there. You get flyers in the mail all the time. I get them twice, three times a week from people like, we can get you out of debt. Here's a $70,000 loan. Just do these things. And I'm, I'm very skeptical. I'm a skeptical person. So I'm like, nope, rip it up immediately, throw it out. I took a chance with Citizens Debt Relief because I have a friend who works with the company. He told me about them and... I'm a believer. Uh, I was talking to them earlier, uh, I guess it was last month actually, and said, hey, you know what? I, I, I was skeptical and you guys have convinced me this is great. It's working. I've been with the program for a little over a year now. And there's no magic bullet. If you're in credit card debt, if you've you know gotten behind the eight ball and a lot of people have, it's a, there's no easy fix. Those people who say, here's a loan for $70,000, we'll get you out of this. That's not going to work. You have to do it just like dieting. You're going to lose the weight, but it's going to take some time. You didn't get in credit card debt overnight. You're not going to get out of it overnight, but you want to get out of it with someone who's trusted. They've got great ratings with Trustpilot, with the Better Business Bureau. I'm personally telling you that what they are doing is working, and you know from experience I don't promote products or talk about companies that I do not use and that I do not believe in. So I'm telling you firsthand these people know what they're doing. Uh, check out the website. You know, don't ever take just my word for it. Check it out, citizensdebtrelief.com. They have a special phone number that my listeners can use to get a free consultation. It's free. They're not high-pressure people. They're not going to force you into doing anything. It can't hurt to give them a call, and they do personalized, custom debt resolution plans that fit you. Usually, for one thing now, it's not available in every state, so they'll be able to tell you whether or not you're eligible when you call, and you have to have at least... $10,000 or more in unsecured debt. The average person brings to them $24,000, where that's their average uh, of debt. So if you think, boy, I'm, I'm beyond help, I've got I've maxed the credit cards out and everything. No, no, no. 
they can get you the help you need. It's scary. Credit card debt is scary. And one way to get out of it is with a trusted partner, Citizens Debt Relief. The phone number I'm going to give you right now, 877 811 1339 I'm going to say that again. If you're, if you were kind of, well, he's writing, grab a pen, 877-811-1339. Joey V has it right there on the uh, scroller. If you're watching this on the video, don't, don't suffer from credit card debt. Don't get on the treadmill cycle of constantly being at the mercy of these charge card companies who just get bailed out by our tax dollars later on. Turn the tables, get out of debt, be debt free. It's a huge relief. It's a huge burden off your back. Citizens debt relief.com. That number again, 877 877- 811-1339. We're talking, uh, we got my interview that we're playing the rest of this hour with comedian, actor Greg Proops. Right before we took that last commercial break, we were talking about social media with Twitter, and we were talking earlier in the TikTok and everything like that. Now, how that has affected how he does his work and how it affected comedy in general. Well, I have the very great advantage of being in television, very right? television's last greatest gasp. Um in the 90s and early 2000s, people still watched a lot of TV, and shows like Who's Not Is It Anyway were really big deal, and in England and whatnot. And uh, so I got some of the, the advantages of being a television personality. And then when, um, you know, social media sort of took over, I would say, what, 2007, 2008 was when it really kind of started to get huge. I started the podcast in 2010. Um, I think it's been revolutionary because we've been able to take over the means of production, Mm. not to get too Marxist about this, (laughs) but I mean, the, there were a lot of what they call in show business gatekeepers, people who allow you to do your show, who grant you the ability to go on and do a stand up set on a TV show, that kind of thing. And with, the phone being as omnipresent as it is and ubiquitous with young people, especially young people don't care about television very much and their phone and their computer is their entertainment. And so, um, a podcast is a perfect portable entertainment because it's basically a little radio show you take around with you. You can listen to it in your car. You can listen to it on your bike while you're walking, making tea, whatever it is you're doing. So I think it really changed the whole game. Like I don't post a lot of uh, YouTube videos or a lot of Instagram videos or anything like that. I know a lot of comics really do. They drive you crazy posting a video every day on Facebook and whatnot. Um, I don't know if I'm too old for that or just that I've, I try to keep it at times. I mean, obviously I post, I post um, uh, the podcast every week or whenever it comes out. Uh, online Hmm. and I think it's made us more independent Um, you know I think people like for instance Mark Maron who was a really great stand up comedian who I've known for a thousand years I knew him from the old days when his podcast got really popular it really changed his career for him and I thought that was really beautiful you know because he's a really cogent and heartfelt comedian he's sincere and intelligent and it was nice to see him get a bigger audience now, obviously, I don't. I love every comedy podcast because I think there's a lot of guys out there who are really working the dark side just to make money. Hmm. And so I think that's the opposite side of it. But to answer your question, I think it's really changed the game for everybody. And talking about your acting career, I always like to ask because sometimes IMDb gets it wrong. It looks like your first two gigs were... The uh, it was a made-for-TV movie, if I'm not mistaken, Midnight Caller, and another one called Thanksgiving Day. You played a cab driver and then a chauffeur. Were you worried that you were going to get typecast as a driving person? Ah, uh, that's so funny. Um, I did this so long ago that was Thanksgiving Day was awesome because I had a scene with Mary Tyler Moore. No way. And it was a TV movie, yeah, that she made called Thanksgiving Day. This is God, God, I want to say the late '80s, and um. I had to drive a limousine up to the door and then get out and knock on the door. And I had the worst line in the history of cinema. The limousine is here for the Schloss family children, is what I was supposed to say. And that was my only line. And I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know how to act or anything. And my head was shaking all over the place. And Mary Tyler Moore answered the door every time we had to do three or four takes. So I showed up to do the shoot. It was in Los Angeles. I was living in San Francisco. And um, they made me take my glasses off. 
and I'm pretty blind. So I had to drive a limousine up a driveway to a house, park it and get out and go to a door with, with, and absolutely unable to see anywhere I was going. Oh my gosh. So that was good fun. And in Midnight Caller, I was a cab driver. And this one will make you laugh. Um, Gary Cole was the star of that show, and he's a bloody marvelous actor and comedian. And um, it was a show about a, a late-night radio show host who solved murders, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was in San Francisco. And uh, they had me come in and audition for the cab driver, and I did a New York accent because all cab drivers are from New York. Yeah, makes sense. And so they gave me the part, and uh, which I thought was very funny because I, I, you know, I talk like this. Hey, I've been listening to your show. You know, like but I thought <laughs> it made me laugh because I thought I'm not going to just go in and read the lines. I have to do it like a cliche cab driver from a '50s movie, <laughs> which is what people like. And then Gary was really nice. Years later, of course, I've run into him a few times here and there. And he always remembered my name, and I just think he's fantastic. Uh, I remember that we had really awesome pound cake on the set of that show. Oh, it must have been good if you can remember it that long ago. It must have been really good pound cake. <laughs> well, they let me drive a yellow cab around San Francisco with Gary Cole in it, so I was pretty excited at the time. And I also, one of one of my very favorite movies, because I, I probably saw it six times in the theater, Nightmare Before Christmas, you voiced the Harlequin Demon, the Devil, the sax player. Was it the sax player who says, nice work, Bone Daddy? Was that you or was it one of the other members of that band? No, that's me. That is you. That's me. And I, I begged Henry Selick, our director, uh, to let me do Lawrence Welk. I don't know if you remember Lawrence Welk. Yeah. He was a band leader on television that your parents would watch. And Lawrence Welk talked in a fake Norwegian accent like that. Mm-hmm. And um, so... I have a line in the movie where uh, the mayor goes to see Jack and Jack's not there. And um, the mayor says to the musicians, where's Jack? And you can hear me in that scene as as the sax player say, he had him at home all night. So I actually do two different voices for that. So the best part of that is about 10 years ago, Danny Elfman decided to take it on the road and do a live show of it. So we've been doing one every year since then, except during the plague year. Uh, we didn't do it in 2020. Um, so this year we're back at the Hollywood Bowl. We're doing it at the Hollywood Bowl over Halloween, uh, alive with a live symphony orchestra. We show the movie and we sing the movie live to the um, to the screen. Uh, Danny Danny sings his part. Sometimes we have Catherine O'Hara play Sally. Oh Ten my gosh! Ten Boogie. We did it in London the year before and had um, Phoebe Bridgers sing. Sally, and we did it in Los Angeles here before that and had Billy Eilish sang Sally. Oh, wow. So it's a big, uh, as my father would say, Um, it, it's a It's a big undertaking, and I'm right next to the conductor, John Archeri, um, who was Leonard Bernstein's protege. So he tells stories about Leonard Bernstein, but he calls him Lenny when he tells the stories because he knew him. And he'll say it, and he's John has white hair, and he's been a con- conductor composer for a hundred years. And he says things like, "The wonderful thing about Lenny was he had such a marvelous sense of humor." <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, "Okay, John." Um, so we've done it in Japan, in Tokyo, New York, London, Dublin, Glasgow. And Hollywood Bowl, and we're back at the Hollywood Bowl this year. So it's the funnest, funnest, funnest gig I get to do. And it's hard to I believe sing it's professionally on stage. Thirty years since that came out, which boggles my mind because I I still think everything. Yeah, this is our thirtieth anniversary. It, I I think everything that happened in the nineties was just ten years ago. So I, I'm, no, I'm, me too. <laughs> me too. But it was, it was yesterday. I, I wish we could have that. Have you guys come here to St. Louis? Ken Page is from St. Louis. He's one of our uh, one of our you know very uh, proud the sons of St. Louis would be so Absolutely. great to have you come back here for that. Ken Page still lives in St. Louis. Yeah. And um, every time I play St. Louis, I ask him if he wants to come to the show and uh, I see Ken every year and he's a really lovely guy. Yeah. He's a total St. Louis hero. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, if just uh, whisper in Danny's ear, I say, Hey, we should do a show in St. Louis. Can it be down for oh, us? You know, <laughs> I want to do it more, but it's always up to Danny. He's so busy. He's always writing the score to like four or 15 or whatever, right? Or some superhero thing. So he's super busy, but yeah, you know, where there was talk about doing it in Chicago, there was talk about doing it in Italy. There's always some sort of talk about doing it places but it really boils down to when danny can find a week to do it it's a lot of work for him i mean he has to sing the whole bloody shit doesn't he yeah that's true and um the last time we did it was london no we did it um yeah we did it in london last christmas with phoebe bridgers hmm. and we did two shows at wembley arena which is great fun because the beatles played there and oh, everything yeah, yeah. And some of the other stuff you've done, uh, I saw on your trivia that you performed for Prince Charles, now King Charles, you performed for him. Was there a lot of pressure? I mean, you're performing for royalty. Was this, uh, talk a little bit about that experience, if you We will talk about that with Greg Proops performing for then Prince, now King Charles. Uh, before we go to commercial break, though, I've got about a bunch of people in the chats. Greg is not live with us, unfortunately. This is a pre-recorded interview, so I apologize to Zachary. And I said Nathan earlier. It's Zachary Nathanson. I was looking very quickly, doing five things at once. So I said, Nathan, congratulations. Zachary Nathanson's our winner of the Kokomo Trivia tri uh, Challenge earlier. So, uh, so yeah, Zachary, I don't have Greg with me online uh, right now. Is a pre-recorded interview, so I apologize. But I saw that you were, uh, were mentioning Arlene Sorkin, Bob Barker, Jimmy Buffett, and Paul Rubens. And Chance said, you know, it was rough to hear, uh, you know, Bob Barker. It's been a rough week for everyone. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to have Dan Reba, Kevin Altieri, and Diane Pershing live on the air with us. We're going to celebrate the life of Arlene Sorkin. So if you are like me and a lot of listeners, very sad about Arlene's passing, tune in next Sunday. We're going to have those three people who knew Diane, so, or who knew uh, Arlene very well, uh, talk about Diane, great memories, celebrating her life and her talent. So make sure you tune in next Sunday for that. We're going to take another quick commercial break. We are going to come right back, chat more with Greg Proops. Remember, who's line anyway, who's live anyway, at the factory. Tickets are still available last I looked, so check those out. You're listening to geek to me Radio on the Big 550 KTRS. Please stand by. Phone. Hooded Hound t-shirt, dry doggy rain gear, pup's jazzy jacket, and found puppies all sold separately. From town. Record the demolisher to the rescue! Ideal's new RoboForce. Warrior robots with gripper bases and crusher arms, each sold separately. Hundreds escaping! Okay in there? Okay, Dad! But we won't be safe till we're rid of Hundred. Hundred the Conqueror, Max Steel the Leader, Wrecker the Demolisher, each sold separately. New from Ideal's RoboForce. Long ago at Rose Petal Place, Orchid met Mastina, the evil spider. Dolls sold separately. Oh no, Orchid, it's Nastina! Wait till I tiptoe through your tulips, Rose Petal. Watch out, Nastina, the sky is falling. I won't fall for that. Gotcha! That'll keep her in her place. <laughs> Rose Petal, Nastina, and Orchid dolls come with all you see here, each sold separately. Hi, this is Diane Pershing, the voice of Poison Ivy, and you're listening to Geek to Me Radio. And we're back. Geek to Me Radio on the Big 550 KTRS. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page if you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon so we get a notification. Uh, we have a brand new subscriber, Violet Sky, just subscribed to us on YouTube. So thank you, Violet Sky. We appreciate that. If you haven't already subscribed to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash geek to me radio hit that subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate it. That way, if you click the bell icon, you'll never miss a show. Something else you don't want to miss out, Comic Book Day. New comic books every Wednesday. Where are you going to go? Bugs, comics, and games. I was just out there talking to Larry, uh, I guess it was yesterday, on Saturday. Popped out there, got some books. Um, if you are wanting to maintain your hobby, you might want to go talk to Larry, and you might want to have a pull list started and then join the Avengers Club. That way you start saving money on your comics that you get every week so you don't have to say, well, I, I'm, you know, got to 
worry about money this week, so maybe I won't get this comic. No, save some money on the comic books. Keep getting them. Just subscribe to the Avengers Club, and that way you get money off your new issues, your back issues, your toys, your games, your bags, your boards, whatever it is you want to get. And Larry's got a lot of stuff. I always got like to kind of look at the stuff in his display case. It's uh, He's got some gorgeous bronze keys, silver keys. But then he had uh, Dad come in with his two sons, and Larry's, what are you looking for? Daredevil comic books. And Larry's like, oh, we got Daredevil here. We got some over here. New comics. We got Daredevil and Echo series, depending on where they are in their Daredevil journey. But he does it with everyone that comes in. It's always so cool because I always say it's like having your own personal comic concierge. So if you're new to collecting, if you're an old hat to collecting and want to see what else is out there in the new comics that are coming out each week, if you want to sell a collection, buy a collection, if you're looking to just kind of dip your toe in the water and see what all this fuss is about with the new Blue Beetle movie and the Flash movie, where these things come from. Go out and talk to Larry. He's out there on Brian Road in O'Fallon, right between Highway 70 and the Page Extension 364. Easy to get to from either of those areas. Go out and see him. Bugs Comics and Games. Make sure you give the Facebook page a like. Bugs Comics and Games on Facebook. Very proud to have him as our official comic book sponsor here on geek to me Radio. Before we took that last break, we're chatting with Greg Proops. Again, a pre-recorded interview. So unfortunately, I know a lot of you have had questions. I'm sorry I can't ask them in person. This is a pre-recorded interview. Uh, it's always talking to Joey. It's great because I have the pre-recorded interviews. I feel a little more relaxed, but I don't have that live interaction. I can't have you guys ask questions. So it's a double-edged sword. Uh, but we were talking to Greg about performing for originally, at the time, Prince Charles, now King Charles. And here's what Greg had to say about that. Well, it was his 50th birthday, and so it was some time ago. And, of course, he wasn't King Charles. He was the artist formerly known exactly, yes. as Prince. <laughs> and so uh, it was the first time he'd brought Camilla out in public. This was 97, 98. Mm. And um, there was a whole bunch of stars and comedians and whatnot. And El McPherson and uh, Peter Ustinoff, of all people, Robbie Williams, Ginger Spice. Wow. Uh, and then a load of British comics, uh, Mel Smith and Griff Rhys Jones and um, Stephen Fry and Rowan Atkinson. So I was in a dressing room with all of them, with all the comics. Hmm. So I spent all day with Stephen Fry and Rowan Atkinson and Smith and Jones and then Vinnie Jones, the footballer. And um, it was a great day. So we did our show and... Um, you know, oh, what, Charlotte Church was just a little kid. Charlotte Church, the singer, oh, yeah. was, I think, 12 or 13. And George Martin was working with her. So I got to meet George Martin and Roger Moore, Charlotte Church. Uh. And then I saw Charlotte about three or four years ago. We, My wife and I were in Wales. And we went to a concert in Cardiff, a John Cale concert. John Cale's from Cardiff. And backstage... It was all the famous Welsh people. It was Michael Sheen and Charlotte Church. And I'd met them all before. And so, and she couldn't have been nicer. And Charlotte Church lives in Cardiff, of all things, which you wouldn't think. I said, you don't live in London? And she went, no way, mate. (laughs) Um, So uh, I did the show. And then afterward, we had to meet him, right? Well, the royals don't do anything but meet. So they're very good at meeting people. So we're all standing in a line. And I was behind John Collins. And um, the prince came along, and he grabbed me by the hand, and he pulled me right up close to his face, and he went, have you come here just for this? And I was like, uh, um, yes. Uh, and then he said, um, when are you leaving? And I thought, oh, my God, am I supposed to come over? Did I blow it? Was I? Did I miss something in the meeting we had? Because I had to go to a meeting in London before the stand-up show to talk about what jokes Charles might like. Okay. And I was ushered into an office, and a very posh British lady said to me, well, it's obviously got to find a recorded performance of Prince Charles' birth, and we'd like to go over some of the topics that he thinks would particularly interest to him uh, that he might find quite humorous in the night. And I said, well, lay it on me. What, what is he interested in? And she said, well, two of Prince Charles' principal interests are... Um, Organic farming and architecture. Have you any material on this subject? <laughs> and I was like, um, yeah. Are you kidding me? What comic doesn't have 25 minutes on organic farming? <laughs> um, and all, architecture, don't even. I'll give you a flying retro routine that'll knock your socks off. <laughs> so um, I was like, no, but I'll do what I do. And so I did my jokes. And, uh, this is the 90s, so one of the jokes was, what was it? Uh, everyone... Um, Everyone that works in Disney World is polite, so where do they build a Disney World Paris? 
<laughs> and um, that was very funny to the English, you see. <laughs> and uh, my wife said, Prince Charles laughed at your jokes and everything. And then we had to sing happy birthday to them, him at the end. And they had a prompter, I swear to you, a prompter on screen, on stage. For happy birthday? That said the words to happy birthday on it. Huh. And I was like, is there anybody left on earth who doesn't know the words? Is it and a different it version in English? Birthday. Is that why? I don't know. I think <laughs> they just wanted us to, nobody to be nervous. Happy birthday, your royal highness, which doesn't scan. No. Um, so is it, that was an amazing night. It really was. And then we had a big dinner afterward at the banqueting hall in London, which is next to Parliament. And that was where um, they kept Charles II before they lopped his head off. <laughs> so the king that he was named after, uh, who's I think the only British king that they, uh, that was during their little, uh, the War of the Roses and all that. Yeah. When they, when they got rid of a king, which they're not very good at revolution, as one of them said to me. <laughs> this is true. Historically bears yeah, out. But yeah. The French are quite good at it. We did it once, but. No, and a lot of beheading in France too. They should have, uh, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah, they love it. So that was it. Was an amazing experience, and uh, uh, no, he hasn't phoned me since then. I was just, I was just curious. He seemed very interested in your movements after the show. I didn't. I thought maybe was he, he might just have rang you up again? He, he was a little shorter than I thought too. I thought he was tall, but he wasn't. Hmm. Yeah, he does look tall, and the it must be the camera right? camera angles. Right, and and William and Harry were there, but they were like children, of course. Yes. Um, yeah, it's kind of, again, that's hard to believe picture them as children now. Cause that's all we know them. And now as you know, the, the, the older Royal children who are writing books, right. and, you know, having children themselves and everything. It's very odd to think about that. Again, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago that the nineties happened, but it was. I know. And I don't want to keep you too much longer. Uh, we had Colin mockery on the show a couple of years back. He had a movie out talking about how improv can save the world. So we picked his brain about improv and some of his movie stuff as well. Uh, having a friendship with someone like that, you mentioned you know, you and Ryan are close. Do you, do you tend to gravitate towards people who are kind of more of the same, I don't want to say improv mindset, that's not the word I'm looking for, but more of a comedic mindset, if that sounds right? We'll find out just exactly how Greg Proops picks his friends after this quick commercial break. You're listening to Geek to Me Radio on the Big 550 KTRS. Please stand by. These tropic gals. Seaweed's tropic gals. Camille, Baby Cascade, and Telly. Other Seaweed's tropic gals sold separately. Introducing the new Play Doh Mop Top Hair Shop. What well, are the mop tops? The Play Doh Mop Tops. Just turn the chair. They grow Play Doh hair. They're the mop tops. You can comb it, wave it, style it, or shave it. The Play Doh Mop Tops. You can let it grow down to his toes. They're the mop tops. From the Play Doh Mop Top Hair Shop. The Play Doh Mop Top Hair Shop. Sold with everything you see here. New from Kenner. Here's Sit and Spin from Kenner. You can spin around, sit around, even carry it around. Let's go inside. You can spin some more, like before, most anywhere you put it down. Sit and Spin, the indoor-outdoor take-along spinning toy. Wow! You can spin like one, spin like two. How you spin, I'll tell you. Sit and Spin, you put it together. From Kenner's Discovery Time. I love nestling up to you, Wind Whistler. You're so soft. So soft, my little pony. My little pony is so soft to touch. I love the way you feel, my so soft pony. Paradise. So soft, Shady. Wind Whistler. You're gonna love Ribbon. So much. So Lofty. You're gonna love Each sold separately. So you're so soft. So soft, my little pony. Shady and other so soft ponies sold separately. From Hasbro. Supernatural! Now you can join the battle between brave Lionheart and the evil Skull and their eerie ghostlings. Lion, you're dying! Now, Master! They change to fight with ghostly might. Turn them into the light and they change into even more. 
relaxing, which makes it especially great for bedrooms and bathrooms. And of course, get 40% off all of our other colors. Shop the sale online or visit your neighborhood Sherwin-Williams store. Retail sales only. Some exclusions apply. See store for details. Hi, this is Alex Kingston. Welcome back. No spoilers, but you're listening to geek to me Radio. Hello again to all of you. The chat's been very chatty tonight. I appreciate you all checking in. Uh, Zachary had a good question about my previous interview with Ron Friedman, and I did not ask him that. I'm not sure who scored that, Zachary. I know he wrote the scripts for that. Uh, Ron Friedman wrote the scripts for that original Iron Man animated series from 94, but I don't know who scored the music, unfortunately. Uh, so I do not have the answer for that one at the ready. I'll try to find out, though. Um, I do have an answer for you. If you're looking for someplace fun to go, if you're looking for someplace new to check out, maybe you're wanting to do some traveling, maybe the fine people right outside the studio window who are walking right here, they've got their cell phones out, and they're wondering, hey, where do we go from here? Check out the nightlife in St. Charles, all you beautiful people right outside the windows here at KTRS. They're waving. They can hear me now. Uh, <laughs> if you're looking for something fun to do, if you're wanting to check something cool out, Go to downtown St. Charles right there along the historic district. They've got fantastic food. They've got fantastic musical events going on. They've got a lot of cool shops and something always going on. The city of St. Charles has been with me since the beginning when I first started the radio show. And they have been great people to be partnered up with. The festivals are about to kick underway. It's coming up to fall season, and I always get excited because Halloween, of course, right around the corner, they're going to start their Legends and Lanterns Festival. A great time to get out there. And check out Historic St. Charles. If you are local, if you are from out of town, like our friends Zachary Nathanson or Chance from Atlanta or wherever you may be, you want to plan someplace new to go in the fall, put the city of St. Charles on your list. Start by going to the website, discoverstcharles.com. That's discover st Charles. Dot com. Check out all the places to stay. Check out all the places to eat. My goodness, the food. Uh, you might find some cool gift ideas up and down the cobblestone, picturesque streets. Always something fun to do in St. Charles, no matter what you're up for, no matter what uh, kind of mood you're in. The city of St. Charles is pretty good at scratching whatever itch you might have. So go check them out. Uh, whether you're here local or from out of town, start at the website, discoverstcharles.com. That website, again, discoverstcharles.com. As we always say, it's an historically good time. Wrapping up my interview with actor, writer, comedian Greg Proops. Uh, before we took that last break, we were talking to him about his friendships, how he forms relationships with these other people who, like uh, Colin Mockery, who we had on the show before. Does he seek out those kind of people? Do they just gravitate towards him? How he makes friends. Let's talk to him about it. Well, it's only natural since we all roll together. And, of course, Colin and I uh, do lots of gigs together over the years. I think the last time we actually went on the road was we went to Australia a few years ago, me and him and Brad, and did a couple weeks. We did Sydney Opera House and everything. And I love Colin, and he's a beautiful person. And uh, I don't know that improv can save the world, but um, he's really a delightful guy, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And lastly, I know uh, I couldn't let you go without talking about Star Wars. You've got quite a bit of a foothold in the franchise uh, from Episode One, plus the video games you've done and all that. Did you did you imagine yourself when you were younger that one day you'd be voicing characters in the world that George Lucas created? I did not. No, I went to see the movie like everybody else when it came out in 1977. I went with my family on De Rossi. We went to the uh, Cinerama Dome in San Jose, and we got high, and, uh, you know, we were in high school, and uh, then I got to audition for it in 90, go oh, kittens, 96, whenever we made Phantom Menace, which wasn't called Phantom Menace then, by the way. It was called Episode One, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I got on because I uh, had an American accent, and they wanted American accents for the podcast pod race announcers. And uh, George directed us. I can call him George because I met him. Uh, we worked with him at Leavesden Studios outside of London. And uh, it was us and 5,000 technicians and a big blue screen. And we had gigantic heads on that we wore uh, that they made for us. And then they CGI'd him right out of the movie. But George is about as low-key as you could be having 150 people standing around. Yeah, I can imagine at this point he's pretty much used to that. That's That's nothing to him, I suppose. No, and, you know, he did the right thing. He sold all of it to Disney, and then he gave all that money to charity. So I really have a lot of respect for him. Yeah, yeah. 
And then with all the TV you've done too, Drew Carey Show, Family Matters, Jamie Foxx Show, Third Rock from the Sun. If you had to look back on your career as you proceed forward to the next phase, looking back, is there something that you're maybe most proud of in your career or something that really stands out to you, but you're like, boy, working with this person or this director was just a highlight for me. Well, going around the world with my wife has been the most rewarding part and getting to play Australia and France and Holland and Sweden and, you know, Scotland and whatnot. Um, I think uh, doing improv with the guys has been amazing. Um, I, I have the most fun doing Nightmare because I get to sing. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm not a good singer, but I'm loud. <laughs> it's the enthusiasm more than the talent. I think that's, that's kind right. of a lot. Volume, volume ensures quality. <laughs> and again, if you're just now listening, make sure you check out who's live anyway. It'll be at the factory in Chesterfield, September 20th. If you can't make that, they're doing shows, again, in Kansas City, in Columbia, Missouri, and Springfield, Missouri. Or if you're listening to this outside the greater St. Louis area, if you're hearing us after the fact in the podcast form, just check out. We'll have a link if you scroll down to the show notes where you can catch the show coming to a city or state near you. If people want to keep up with you on social media, websites, things like that, what's the best place for people to find you, Greg? GregPrips.com. It's all there. Uh, I do a film club with my wife. We're showing 39 uh, Steps. In two weeks' time, uh, the podcast, um, uh, Who's Live Anyway? I got an album coming out in September of stand-up, like I said, called Fritz Drug Deal. And then we're on the road with the group for ages and ages. I'll also be in um, Kansas City for the Negro League Museum Hall of Game on September 9th, which is a great fun. And this year they're inducting Vida Blue, John Tell Willis, Doc Gooden. Um, Dave Stewart's going to accept for Vida Blue. And Al Downing, all black uh, pitchers who've won 20 games in the mid leagues. Wow, and that's right down Highway 70. Uh, in yeah, Kansas it's City. really fun. The Negro League Museum is so worth a visit. It's such a uplifting place, and uh, I've been lucky enough to host a bunch of events there. And Bob Kendrick, who runs the place, um, has been lovely to me about it. And, of course, I'm a huge baseball fan, so it's very exciting for me. And that's September 9th, you said, correct? Yes, that's right. All right, we'll put that on the calendar as well. Greg Prips, I appreciate your time so much. Thank you for taking the time, and uh, keep breaking legs out there on the road. Thank you, brother. There he goes, Greg Proops. Quite a guy, very nice, gave us all that time. He and I chatted for a good half hour or so, um, and it's it's always great to talk to these people who have been working and doing amazing stuff in comedy and improv. I have great respect for comedians and people who can just – stand up on stage in front of a ton of people and and do their thing but those i remember when i was young back at six flags they had the monitors stationed every so often this was before people were just glued to their cell phones before cell phones um and they would show whose line is it anyway the old show from the the british one and i i'm like oh my gosh this is hilarious and i'd be fine no matter how long the line was for the screaming eagle i'd be fine because i'm sitting there watching this great show and that kind of i think uh grew my love of improv of comedy and uh just that kind of quirky humor um we've got a few minutes left here before we go to commercial break and joey you can give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if you like this idea I didn't get to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Do you want to say something about the movie, how you liked it? Because you saw it twice, and I, I have not seen it. Do you want to give you a quick review? Yeah, sure. Why not? Ninja Turtles was incredible in 3D, is, is what I heard when I listened to a review. So I had to go back and see it in 3D. And the animation style was just amazing. Because it's, it's like a claymation, hand-drawn 3D mm. that was perfect for 3D. I, I usually don't care about 3D until it's something like Avatar, but this was this was great, so I, I highly recommend it. But it just came out on streaming digital yesterday for premium video on demand. You can it already came out buy that it quickly. It's still in theaters, yeah, and you can you can buy it now. It, these windows are so short right now. It's crazy because you would think it's like I said. I, I thought it'd probably be at least a little while longer before it came out because it, it. I guess it just depends on the movie company if they want to put it right on their platform right away or not. Yeah, it could be you know some uh, behind the scenes stuff that people don't like you know with uh, putting things on Paramount Plus, not ask, asking Netflix or anyone else how much they would pay for it. You just sell it to yourself and then put it on streaming immediately. So it, people are losing money big time, and that's why there's the SAG after strike. So yeah, I highly recommend it, especially if your kid is maybe a little bit older, maybe eight or nine, because Something I remember from that first live action one from 1990 is when mm -hmm. they say cuss words in it. It right. really 
God, I thought that was so cool and edgy. <laughs> that I counted for for some strange reason. There was nine swear words in this one. So it's wow. a kids movie, but it's very dark. What, was it PG thirteen? Yeah, okay. I believe it is. Maybe even PG. You know, Ice Cube. He is the big bad guy, and mm-hmm. his voice acting is incredible. It really makes that character even more evil and legit. And then Jackie Chan is hilarious as Master Splinter. That's a he perfect loves role his, for him. His kids, but he hates humans. They're, they're <laughs> scum of the earth, and they're gonna murder us. You know, I I, re- I recommend it. I hopefully you get to see it. I know your wife doesn't like cartoons that much, but yeah. Um, now I know because the reason I go to you on this is because I know you're a Turtles fan. I brought mm-hmm. you back autographed stuff from the people from Thank the movie. Thank you so much. Yes. And I know you're you've always got you're showing me your Turtles stuff that you've got and everything like that. How is this like if 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 someone like me who grew up watching the show in the '80s mm-hmm. and then you have that live action love for those '90s? What how does this compare? Do you think to the Turtles? I know it's different, but would you say it's as good, better? Are people who are seeing it now, like the eight nine year olds you mentioned, going to love it as much as we loved our generation's thing? You think? Yeah, I think they will love it. I mean, what really got me was those Jim Henson creatures looked so real and it was so dark. It was really one of the first comic book movies that took it seriously, like the way we think of Dark Knight now. So this new one, uh, the kids are going to love it because it's so dark, it's so edgy. It's it's kind of above what they've been fed. Like if you've been forced to watch, you know, Trolls or oh either the Minions movies, this is something that makes you think it's so funny and they improve on the original formula because these are actually teenagers that are voicing it. Mm-hmm. That's what was missing before. It was like old men writing scripts for teen, teenagers, but, you know, they were like 50s surfers or something. They were saying cowabunga and... <laughs> Totally tubular. Rob Paulson, if you're listening, Joey V did not just call you old. It was it was he meant endearingly, I'm sure. Older. Sure. Yes, all the back. slang, all the references. <laughs> it's very modern, but I think it makes sense for the way kids are today. They've all got phones. You know, their their dream is to go to high school. They love humans, but Splinter says they're not allowed to interact mm. with humans, and that's their dream. They want they just want to go to high school. So it's it's very much a modern take on them then. It's yeah, up, it, it's updated quite a bit. It's set in twenty twenty three, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so that's, uh, again, Joey V does a lot of uh, movies on, on Letterbox and everything like that. Um, is that something you can give out publicly or, or if people want to see your reviews and everything like that? No. No? It's private. Never mind. Pretty but good. I rated it a four out of five stars on Letterbox there. Four out of five stars. Right, yeah. so, wow, that's pretty good. All I, right. I, I think I'm going to keep watching it again and again. I'm going to buy it. And But if you can see, it's still in theaters. Go see it now. You're going to buy it like, you're going to buy the physical media when it comes out? Or you're going to just love buy it, it to like download? All, all the behind the scenes stuff. That, see, I'd love that, especially the Spider-Verse. That's another thing when the when Across the Spider-Verse comes mm-hmm. out. I think I'm going to get that physical media because I want to see, because that animation style, like you were talking about with Turtles, was so dynamic and it almost changed animation styles depending on what scene you're in and which character like if you're dealing with a Hobie or if you're dealing with Spider Gwen the animation style would change so addressing I kind of want to see the behind the scenes of how all that was done I feel like Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse has caused a revolt against that Pixar type of animation where all the characters from movie to movie kind of look the same and too perfect yeah so yeah, I can see that. That people, is that's a good point. Everything is dirty around the edges and New York City is filthy like it should be and I, I, people are or their tastes are changing. Yeah, it's interesting. We're seeing a uh, revolution in real time here with how movies are being made and how they're being formatted. And the, with the strike, like you mentioned, the movie landscape might look quite a bit different in the next couple of years. Yeah, I believe it's made, uh, what is it? Uh, I don't know, $400 million. It's already been approved for two seasons of a uh, cartoon. Oh, neat. And okay, the sequel the, oh, has been greenlit, too. Owners will be the same voice actors doing a regular... I mean, that would be out. great. It, uh, Paul Rudd is so unrecognizable and so funny in this. Huh. John Cena, uh, so many great voices. That's in what it. a lot of times when you have those big names doing the movie. A lot of times when it goes to an animated series, they get somebody else who can be a voice double. I hope they keep the people. teenage kids at at least because they yeah. were so endearing. We'll see. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, so that's Joey V giving you his review on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because I did not get to see it. He's seen it twice, and uh, it, believe me, he's a Turtles aficionado. I'll go so. again. Trust his opinion. Uh, go see it in 3D. Thank you to everyone who called in tonight and who texted in and who uh, participated in the chats. I greatly appreciate seeing all of you pop up in there. And uh, for those of you who watched tonight, for those of you who listened online, even if you're intermission like Michelle at the Spider-Verse thing at the factory. Uh, thank you to Greg Proops for his time, of course, coming on and chatting all things improv and about his show who's live anyway uh joey will have a link to the show notes that'll september 20th out there at the factory if you uh want to check out next week's show like i said that should be a very good show we've got dan reba 
Kevin Altieri and Diane Pershing will be celebrating the life of Arlene Sorkin, who tragically passed away uh, just earlier this week. Um, another sad, sad loss, but I saw a really cute tweet. She's up there holding hands with Kevin Conroy. Warmed my heart. Uh, thank you to our sponsors, Citizens Debt Relief, and of course, the City of St. Charles, Greater St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau, Bugs, Comics, and Games, and of course, Kokomo Toys, sending us those toys we can give away in these prize packs. We'll be doing prize uh, prizes every week for trivia at the beginning of each show, so make sure you stay tuned for that as well. Thank you to Joey V. I'll turn the camera around because you got to hear it from him, and that's what he looks like, so you can all see him. Thanks for uh, coming in and making the show look and sound as good as it does. Thank you to all the listeners. Until next week, my friends. That's our show. You second city, good night. KTRS, St. Louis.